So over the weekend, I was looking at a couple of my map books here, and I noticed some similarities when it came to the symbology for uh, bodies of water, like oceans, rivers, and lakes. Oftentimes, you'll find a pattern of wavy lines used to visualize these bodies of water. Now, this is actually really easy to create inside of Adobe After Effects. So today I'm gonna to be breaking that down step by step. I'm gonna show you a really simple technique where all you need to do is use one simple shape layer to create this, and it's really customizable. So if you wanna create a bunch of different looks quickly, uh, this is a, a great way to do it. If you'd like to download my project file for this particular tutorial, that's available down in the video description. Follow the link down there. As always, donations are appreciated for that if you have anything to help out. It really does help support my channel. All right, let's get into it. So here I have my After Effects project set up and I already have uh, the country of Australia here as a shape element. I downloaded this from a website called freevectormaps.com and it comes as a couple of different files. And here I have it open inside of Adobe Illustrator. And I actually brought this over and created a shape layer using a premium plugin called Overlord. It's a really, really cool plugin. If you're working with Illustrator a lot and After Effects, if you're working with a lot of vector files, you should definitely check, check out this plugin. Um, I'll leave an affiliate link down in the video description if you wanna go check it out. So I was able to use this to bring it over. So for the next step, I need to create uh, just a solid color background. So for that, you can go to layer and select new solid, or you can simply right click directly in the sequence here. And I'm gonna go to new solid and I'm gonna click on color and I'm gonna grab like uh, some kind of royal blue right here. And I'm gonna call this ocean. Now this comp is an ultra HD comp, 4K. I'm gonna grab the ocean, bring it beneath the Australia map here. So we got a kind of a cool look going on here, but it's really, really flat, really bland. So this pattern is gonna be a great background to help make things look a little, more, little bit more dynamic. So I got my solid, let's lock that off. And I'm gonna go ahead and lock Australia off too so I don't accidentally mess with it. All right, now I wanna create this line pattern. It's really, really simple. You just go up and grab the pin tool and I'm gonna go over here and turn off the fill, and I'm gonna turn on the stroke. And I can set the color of the stroke here. I'm gonna match it to the country element here, which is like a little bit of an off-white. And I'm gonna set the stroke width uh, really, really small. Let's bring it down to like five. Now I'm gonna create my first line. I'm gonna click off the screen here. I want these to be uh, horizontal lines. So I'm gonna click kind of just out of frame here. And then I'm gonna hold shift to make sure my line is perfectly straight. And then I'm gonna click over here. So now I have a line. Now I'm gonna rename this shape element. Let's call it waves, cause these look like waves. All right, and I want this to be perfectly center in my comp. So to do that, click right down here and make sure rulers and guides are visible. And I'm gonna click in the ruler section up here so I can get a guide. And then I'm gonna right click directly on it. And to get it perfectly centered, I just need to put in half the number of pixels of the actual height. So the height is what? It's 21, 2160, so uh, we do 1080. And now I can grab these and these will snap directly to here. Now it'll be perfectly centered. It doesn't have to be right in the middle. It just makes it mathematically easier. Uh, you'll see in just a second. So now I'm gonna close this shape element here. Now I wanna give it that wavy effect. So for that, I'm gonna go over here and click on this add button. And I'm gonna do this with this little animator called Zigzag. So if I click on this, it's gonna add a zigzag and you're gonna see it's already given it a little bit of a zigzag. So if I open this up, you'll see three parameters. I have size, ridges per segment, and points. So as I bring up the size, you're gonna see it's making these bigger. And then as I increase the ridges, it makes it more like this. So this is looking cool. But I want these to be rounded off. So I'm gonna open this up and I can change corner to smooth. And there, we're already getting a look that's very close to what I want, but I want it to be much smaller. So I'm gonna bring this up high, high, high. We want it, actually 100's good. And I'm gonna bring the size down because these are much too, it's like the amplitude's too much. So I'm gonna set this to like 10. That's looking good. And now um, I've got my initial line. Let me turn off guides. I don't wanna see this anymore. I don't wanna see guides. And I don't need to see rulers either. Now I'm just gonna repeat this. Go back up here and click on repeater. Now the repeater defaults to give you three copies and it sets them, it offsets the position by an X value. So if you open up the repeater here and you open up the transformation properties of the repeater, you can see that the position is defaulted to 100, zero. 
So I'm gonna zero out X because we don't want the X position to change at all. We want that to be aligned. And if I increase the Y, you can see now they start to spread apart or I can decrease it to bring it up top. But let's just increase it. So you can remember that when you go to customize these later, if you want to mess with that gap, you're gonna to need to change the Y position of the transformation of the repeater. If you want to, if you're if you're duplicating these and doing a bunch of different designs, what I would suggest you do is you create slider controls and then you link up all these elements so that when you go to customize it, all of your slider controls will be in your effect controls so you can quickly um, like bang through a bunch of different patterns. That would be kind of a cool method. Or if you just want to quickly customize it. So something like 40 is looking pretty good for the gap. Now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to increase the copies. So let's increase the copies. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it right to the edge and then I'm gonna look at the numbers. So that's about 30, brings it to the edge. So I'm gonna double that. I'm gonna do 60 and the reason I double that is so now I can offset it. And to offset it, I need to bring this into the negative. And I simply need to use the half of the number of copies and that's gonna make it cover my whole comp here. So there, now we've got these waves, I'm gonna bring this underneath the Australia layer. Not that it really matters because they're the, both the same color. Now it's looking pretty flat. We want it to blend in a little bit better. So to blend it in, I'll open this up. And once again, I'm gonna to go to the repeater, uh, the transformation parameters of the repeater. And I'm gonna bring the end opacity down. You, you can see it has two opacity elements, which makes it good. You can create like a gradient look. You have start opacity and end opacity. If you bring the end opacity down to something like 15, now I've got kind of a gradient here and I can bring, let's bring the start opacity down to like 75. So there you go. Now I've got my water symbolized here. If I wanted to um, change the look, once again, I'm going to be adjusting the zigzag, the two parameters here, the size and the radius. So I can adjust this here. And since we have the repeater applied, um, it's going to automatically affect all of them. It makes it really easy to customize. I can quickly bump this up. I could bring it down. I can change the ridges per segment. Like I said, you can get a bunch of different looks very, very quickly. And look how clean this, uh, this sequence is. It's just my country layer, the wave shape layer, and the ocean uh, solid color background. Super, super easy. Okay, as always, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this. Hit that notification bell so you're immediately notified of new uh, cool map tutorials. If you wanna see more Monday maps, uh, I have a playlist called Monday Maps, and um, I'm, I'll link to that in the video description. There's all kinds of cool stuff. And once again, the project file is available for download. Everything's down in the video description. As always, once again, donations are appreciated. I'm kind of throwing around the idea of creating a Patreon page because it's really hard to monetize these map videos. I really love making them, but making any money off of them is, is proving to be a little bit difficult. So I don't even know if anybody would support it. If you're a viewer and you would support a Patreon page, let me know down in the comments section and uh, maybe I'll try to get something set up. All right, see you in the next one.